You're listening to the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager, and on today's episode, we will explore my journey to becoming a nurse and a functional medicine practitioner. So stay tuned. Hello, nurses, and welcome to this edition of the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager, and I am your host. Today, I wanted to give you a little insight into who I am and my journey to practicing and teaching functional medicine. I wanted to start by going way back to when I was pregnant with my first son. This was before I became a nurse. I was watching a lot of those shows that were popular on TV at the time for birth stories, and I kept seeing a pattern where women were going into the hospital system to deliver their babies, and almost like you could see what was gonna happen in the story. After a while, they would have a scheduled delivery date, Pitocin would be started, and it would turn into a C-section. And I started to realize that lots of moms I knew had similar stories to this. And I found out that the C-section rate in the United States was about a third of deliveries at the time. This was back in 2004, and it really got under my skin. And I learned about the idea of midwifery at the time, and I was realizing that women that saw midwives had a much lower rate of C-sections and complications. And this uh, it made me really wanna become a nurse midwife. And so I enlisted a midwife to be my practitioner for the birth of my son, and I started pre-reqs to become a nurse myself. I definitely got a taste of reality in nursing school. I had felt like my goal for starting was to empower women to believe in the healing powers of their own body and that they didn't need to be told what their body was telling them and that they could listen a lot to their own intuitions. And that in most cases, there were a lot less interventions that led to medical complications when they really trusted in their own bodies. Well, while I was in nursing school, I was becoming really interested in the entire human body, not just pregnant ones. And uh, I became really interested in biochemistry associated with healthcare overall. And um, I was realizing that it was going to be challenging for me to fulfill the types of roles that I was hoping for and be the breadwinner for my family. So uh, I got a job at my local hospital that I had done a lot of my training at, and I worked there for eight years. I started out by working on a medical surgical floor, and I really enjoyed the connection I was able to make with patients there, even though uh, the time that I would have wanted to educate them was a little bit limited in that setting, as many of you may relate to. Uh, ultimately, I ended up becoming a critical care float nurse and I spent my last few years in the hospital primarily taking care of people who had had open heart surgeries or had recently had a heart attack, um, ICU patients. And I was getting really frustrated with the lack of true solutions that we had to a lot of our patients' health concerns. There was a new prescription every time they had a new list of symptoms, and this was becoming really frustrating for me. Around that time, I was in my nurse practitioner training through Georgetown University. And I was learning how to diagnose and treat a lot of those conditions. I was uh, pretty dismayed to realize that nurse practitioner school was just training me to diagnose and prescribe and didn't give me any new real tools for helping to improve my patient's health outcomes in a healing way. It was more mitigating illness and I was now able to diagnose. I, at the same time, I had a friend who had been a nurse for quite a long time, and he was now a physician's assistant. And he told me that the day that he started PA school was the day that he stopped talking about the whole person. And that was something that has always really stuck with me. And at the time, it definitely expressed how I was feeling because we were getting a list of symptoms from patients and coming up with a diagnosis. That was the new training I had as a nurse practitioner. I was feeling really brokenhearted about the whole process, but I was feeling optimistic also that by the time I became a nurse practitioner, I could change things. Well, I went on to become a family nurse practitioner, and I practiced as a primary care provider for four years. And I was a primary care provider at my local community clinic, which was um, connected to the hospital that I mentioned earlier that I worked in. And I practiced doing a lot of diagnosing and prescribing, like I was mentioning earlier, too. I tried as much as I could to incorporate education for my patients, but uh, my local community hospital had always been a place that I was really proud to work at. And I have a lot of friends that were really proud to work there, too. Um, 
unfortunately, we were bought up by a large cor corporation and they had bought up a lot of the local clinics too. So when I first started practicing in primary care, I had this really great support network of leaders that were guiding me and they told me to build my practice how I wanted to. So I was super spoiled and I got to set up my visits to be as long as I wanted them to be with patients and I could get detailed history on them and provide a lot of education. After we were bought by the corporation, they started to uh, encroach a lot of restrictions on the time I was able to spend with people and the education part was definitely falling by the wayside. So during this time, I am studying functional medicine on the side and I'm looking for something else to help me uh, improve how I'm feeling about my work and looking for something more. So I, I was at a conference and it was a conference that I had been to similar topics maybe two years before. I was really excited to hear about the updates on guidance for irritable bowel syndrome. As you may know, that one is a really tough one to treat for a lot of people. And this was a talk from a leading a physician that was an authority on the topic. I had heard him present on it the time before. And so I'm sitting there waiting for him to get started. And I realized that he is presenting the exact same slides, the same rote, not super helpful guidance that he had given before. And I really didn't consider it to be holistic whatsoever. So rather than continue listening to him, I pulled out my phone and I started looking for a better option to help my patients. I came across the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy and they had a nurse coach program where you could become a board certified nurse coach. So I found out they were having a cohort starting not long after this conference I was at and it was only an hour from my house. Um, at the time, it was a six month program that you would meet at the beginning for an intensive period and then again at the end. Since then, that has all gone online. So it's a little bit different, easier to access than the driving. Um, but I signed up and a good friend of mine went with me. And when we got there, I was really hopeful that it was going to give me all those answers I'd been looking for. Instead, it created a lot of questions. If you are already a nurse coach, you probably know that nurse coaching doesn't give you very many answers. It teaches you how to ask your patients or clients the questions to help them uncover what their barriers are, what their goals are, and how they want to get to where they want to be. And that was really exciting for me because it helped me realize that I wasn't the authority on someone else's health care and hopes. And that really flipped things for me because despite my goal of being an educator for my patients and empowering them, I definitely had been taught in the allopathic model that I was the authority telling patients what they needed to know and that if they didn't do what I recommended they do, they were labeled non-compliant. Nurse coaching really flips that on its head because you can't be non-compliant if a goal isn't aligned with what you personally have as a goal um, if you're the patient. So... I learned so much from that program and it made me consider being an entrepreneur for the first time. And we can totally and will have another episode on that topic. I built a nurse coaching consulting practice that I did on the side while I continued to do my primary care practice. And I was also still studying functional medicine. Um, I was trying to fold functional medicine into my primary care practice. And my corporation that I was working for continued to ask me to work under stricter, faster guidelines. I just was really being put under a lot of pressure and becoming frustrated because I had this new set of knowledge, learning functional medicine, of how to find the root cause of somebody's health concerns and actually help them heal. But I was limited in the amount of time I had to do that. I was beginning to notice that my patients saw the difference in the amount of time I was able to give them. And I didn't have long visits with them anymore. For me, that was really heartbreaking. On an interesting side note, uh, I was allowed to have my nurse coaching practice by this corporation. And it wasn't considered in violation with my contract with them because they didn't consider it to be a threat, which I thought was really amusing. But they did consider me practicing functional medicine possibly being a threat because they didn't really even understand what it was. I think maybe because it had the name medicine in the title. 
So they had to talk to their lawyers about that one. And ultimately, COVID came at that point and I had some time to work from home virtually for the first time, which was really nice and peaceful for the first time in my nursing career. Um, I was seeing coaching clients online and I was also seeing my primary care patients online. It really flipped a switch for me and created this idea that maybe I could leave this job that was providing a lot of support for my family and take the leap to build something that I believed in because I definitely wasn't believing in what I was doing anymore. So I did that and I still can't believe I did that. I like absolutely pinch myself still all the time. Um, I can't believe that everything worked out the way that it has. And because of that big leap of faith, I feel like I now feel really confident that I'm living my calling and doing what I know I'm meant to do. Well, during this time of me taking this big leap, some of my friends in leadership roles at a local college asked me if I wanted to start teaching pre-licensure students. Um, and I was realizing I loved teaching nurses as much as I loved teaching patients when I started this role. It was a great time for me to get a deeper education into becoming an educator, develop a course, and talk in front of a room full of people. Uh, I was not good at that, for sure, at, to begin with. Um, I'm growing into it still. Uh, so now I have done quite a bit of training in being an educator. Uh, I got a certification as an online educator through Quality Matters, and I am soon taking my certified nurse educator exam. So now I'm an educator and running my own practice. And then Karen Avino, who is one of the two uh, owners of the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy, she uh, reaches out to me and she had been my practicum faculty during my nurse coaching program. She said she wanted to check in to see what I had been up to. So we have the Zoom meeting and she asked me to create the Functional Medicine for Nurses program. And initially I was just like so excited. And I said, yes. And then I got off the Zoom call with her and I really started freaking out because I was definitely experiencing some imposter syndrome and that lasted for quite a while. Well, I had completed at that point the full program through the Institute for Functional Medicine, which is the most respected leader in functional medicine and a lengthy program. And I had also done another two year full program that I had gotten um, my functional medicine certification through. So I knew I had learned more than most people have about functional medicine. I had done a lot of other little classes here and there for sure. Um, and I knew I did have a lot of knowledge because of that. And I just told myself that I could talk about this all day long. I could talk about it day and night. And my family was pretty tired of me just talking about it with them. So somebody else need to hear that. So I knew I could teach this course and I committed to it and I haven't looked back. Currently, we are in our second year and we've had several hundred students go through the program now. I am so excited about that and I love getting to continue to learn more and incorporate that into the program. That's like the perfect blend for me. Um, I am also working on my post-master's doctorate right now. So that is partially to include research that can validate functional medicine practices in an allopathic care setting. So I'm very excited about that too. Last year, the Institute for Functional Medicine reached out to Inca, where I teach the Functional Medicine for Nurses course. They asked me to review the course material and ultimately they decided to partner with us in offering the course. The students currently benefit from a lot of IFM curated toolkit items that we use throughout the course and they are able to use these in their practice. They also get huge discounts in IFM courses, including 50% off the courses that lead to certification that I did. So I will tell you imposter syndrome is a real thing. And I can tell you for certain that I have experienced it many times in my journey to where I'm at now. I will start a new position and think, oh, they're going to figure out that I'm not qualified for this. Uh, but that somehow hasn't happened yet. And finally, when IFM reviewed the course and ultimately partnered with us, I really started to realize that I'm right where I belong and this is who I'm supposed to be and where I'm supposed to be. And now I just feel like it is such a joy to be able to teach functional medicine to nurses in nursing language. In the courses I took while learning functional medicine, I will say the one thing that was lacking was the nursing component. 
One program I had done taught uh, non-practitioners as well. Much of the program content is really like getting these folks up to speed into like basic nursing training. In each of the lessons, I kept waiting and waiting for the content I needed to incorporate into my practice. And most functional medicine courses are taught by physicians. So the content is approachable from that perspective. I learned in nurse practitioner school, diagnose and treat. Sitting in class one day, I had a light bulb go off and I realized that functional medicine really is basic nursing practice. And that's why I was feeling frustrated in a lot of these courses, because it was stuff that I had been learning my entire nursing career and that I had learned in my initial training. Nurses learn so much of functional medicine in their foundational nursing programs and they don't realize it. So I have had the great honor of taking that perspective, translating the how of functional medicine how can we help people heal and sharing it with a growing audience of nurses? I really see it as a privilege that I get to play a role in revolutionizing healthcare with this healing practice. I'll close with a personal note. Many practitioners come to functional medicine and begin incorporating it into their offerings after they experience the healing powers for themselves. For me, this was definitely true. I previously had asthma, eczema, and allergies, which often come in that trio. After being on several prescription medications each day for quite some time, I am really excited to say that using functional medicine practices, I was able to make all of those not an issue for me whatsoever, and that happened quite rapidly, which was to my complete shock at the time. So that's my journey to finding functional medicine. In the Functional Medicine for Nurses course, my RN and NP students often write similar stories of their journey. I am so optimistic for our future. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. If you want to help spread the word about the powerful role nurses can play as true healers using functional medicine practices, consider sharing an episode with a nurse friend or on social media. And click the subscribe button to stay informed of newly released episodes. You can also visit and share the links below in the show notes for more information on nursing resources and the Functional Medicine for Nurses course offered through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Until next time, be well.